Okay, my friends, welcome back to the channel. Today, we have this 424 wine cooler. And it was, um, I've shown this in a previous video because I sold a customer a new one and we took the panel off and put it on the new one and they gave me this uh, to take away. They didn't want it. So um, what I'm going to do is figure out what's wrong with it. Now, I'm pretty sure there's no pressure in the sealed system and I know it has a leak because I serviced this thing uh, last year and I had to put and somebody had put a, a line tap valve on there so I had put some fray on in there and it worked for a while so let's plug it in and see what's going on All right, turn it on. Oh, it's not plugged in. Okay, this thing is disconnected, so let me get something to put these screws in. Okay, it's booting up, it's on. Compressor's not running. That's because there's no starter on there. Okay, let's get a starter on there. Okay, so we put a, a Supco relay on here. Starter. Condenser fan motors on. I don't see. Let me get a, a multimeter. Okay, I'm going to check and see if there's power going into the relay. Yeah, got voltage. I'll move this a little closer here so you can see. It's a scale set at 250. At 120. All right, let's take off the terminal, the wires to the terminals, and we'll check continuity through the windings. Okay, we're going to check now between the top pin, which is the common, and the one on the right on the bottom. That's the run. Got a reading there. So now I got the start winding here. I get over there. Start winding and common. And I got a reading there. So I got readings on all my pins, so there's no open circuits there. So why isn't it starting? I don't know. Let's try another relay. Okay, now I forgot to check the amperage draw on the compressor. I put a gauge on here, got 15 pounds back. There's no port on the high side, so somebody put this on and didn't properly flush the sealed system. I got a feeling this compressor is seized because we're drawing 4.3 amps and this compressor usually only draws about, what is it, 300 BTUs. It draws only maybe 1.8 or something like that when it's normally running. So I'll try another starter I have another starter here which has a capacitor on it, a booster. So we'll try that and see if that helps because maybe the compressor is running but it's not pumping. And if that's the case, we could take the compressor out, cut it open and see what happened to it just for the sake of seeing. Okay. Okay, so I put this uh, booster on here. Now I don't normally use these things, I don't like them, but I pulled this off um, a refrigerator and so I'm just going to use it here in the shop. Let me get this on here. So here it is, this is a Supco 
three and one start. One twelfth to one fifth horsepower. Okay. Okay, I don't see anything happening on the pressure side. Compressor is powered up. Let's see what we got. Same thing, 4.64. Compressor is warm. All right, what we're going to do next is we're going to take all, we're going to recover the refrigerant and maybe put a process port on the high side so we can do a sweep charge and make sure the system is completely empty. So now we're going to pull whatever refrigerant is left in the system, we're going to pull it out and check it out. I don't think we pulled anything out of there. Let's see if it holds a vacuum. It's coming up a little bit. Um, let me put a. Let me put a. Open the high side and see if we have any pressure on that side. Okay, so I cut this off. Not, nothing coming out of there. It's a little bit came out of there, but it's not charged. So, like I said in the earlier part, I know this thing has a leak because it was somebody put this port on here, and I put Freon in it. So, if that compressor is running, it's not pumping, and so, um, but still. And if there was, I guess because the, there wasn't enough Freon in the system, uh, we got a false reading. But there was pressure in there. So, now that we know that this thing is open, I mean, uh, that this thing runs, or at least it's trying to run, let me try one more thing. Okay, I'm using this stethoscope to listen to the compressor and I don't hear anything but yet it's drawn four and a half amps so something it's probably seized and there's no gas in there so whoever put the Freon in years ago never put a change the dryer or it didn't even do a sweep charge and it could have gotten some air in the system and contaminated it and that's the reason why the compressor is seized all right let's go to the next step Okay, now we can get at the hardware to pull this compressor out. Okay, we unsweat the lines. Always watch the flame, make sure it's not pointing anywhere that could be dangerous. Get it out. Okay, so what I'm doing here, now that I have the compressor out, boy, that sucker's hot. Woo! 
I'm just going to plug it in and see if it runs just to be safe or just as a another uh, checkpoint yeah I hear it humming I can feel the bench so my guess is that maybe the piston is seized I don't know what we're gonna do gonna cut this open the compressor is no good anyway so we'll cut this open just so we can see what's going on in there okay here it is You know what? I don't see any oil in there. I wonder why it's seized. Here's the piston right in here. Here's the connecting rod. Here's the motor. You know, oftentimes when Freon leaks out, it, it, um, it takes the oil with it. Yeah, it's kind of tight, so it, the motor is seized. So when we were drawing four and a half amps before, it was because the motor was trying to start. And like I said, I don't, I don't see any oil in there. Jeez, that's really. I wonder why the motor seized it. Where did all the oil go? Must have leaked out with the Freon because I found this little P clip here down on the bottom, and that goes behind here that holds the heat uh, the evaporator heat exchangers. So I'm assuming that somebody changed one of these evaporator coils because we had a process port on the low side. They didn't put a dryer on it. They didn't. This is the factory setup here, and um, that's what happens. You got to do the job right. Otherwise, anyway, I'm going to let this thing cool down. This is a basically, it's smoking. Um, it's basically done. I, I have no use for this. Uh, I could maybe strip some parts off it and throw it in the garbage because it, it needs an evaporator coil and a compressor. And I don't, and maybe um, the computer board might be worth salvaging. And maybe the shelf, I don't know. I, I really don't have the room for it. You know, so I'm just going to strip it and throw it in the garbage. All right, well, that's about it for now. Uh, I have other videos on how to replace compressors. But now you can see why compressors go bad. There's no oil in there. So if you do a job and you lose a lot of oil, you need to put some oil in there. Now, unfortunately, um, there's no dipstick on here where we could check the oil level. So, um, that's just the nature of the game. But that's it. I will see you on the next video, and thanks for watching.